Hey, what's going on? It's James here and welcome to strategy number two, right? Today I've been going over how to get unlimited solar leads that doesn't require a lot of your time, right? So if you're currently using old marketing strategies, like if you're knocking on doors, doing tabling events, unfortunately that takes up a lot of your time, right? With very little to no return on your investment. So today I'm gonna show you the exact same strategies, how we're able to generate hundreds and hundreds of solar leads for our clients every single month and I'm gonna walk you step by step on setting everything up. So before we get started, I wanna go over the traditional marketing versus Facebook marketing. And if you're currently using these old marketing strategies, unfortunately the odds are 100 to one against you. So if you're currently doing tabling events, knocking on strangers door, cold calling homeowners, waving street signs around or hanging door flyers. Unfortunately, the odds are literally a hundred to one against you. You're literally wasting your time with very little to no return on your investment. How would it feel to be able to click a few buttons to generate unlimited solar leads literally on demand? This is the same exact systems that we currently use to generate hundreds and hundreds of solar leads every single month for our clients. But before we get started, we're gonna build a foundation on why and how to effectively generate solar leads running Facebook ads, right? Because if you don't have a solid foundation, unfortunately, you're gonna spin your wheels, you can spend a lot of money or even thousands and thousands of your dollars and possibly get very little to no return on your investment. Trust me, because I've been there, I've done that. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to efficiently and effectively create Facebook ads without spending thousands and thousands of dollars like I did, right? So I'm gonna give you guys a clean condensed version minus all the headaches and minus the thousands and thousands of dollars I already spent. So there's, there's a few common wrong beliefs, right? In running Facebook ads. The first common wrong belief is I have to be tech savvy. So basically just as long as you have a Facebook account, you're up and running, you're ready to go. And obviously if you don't have a Facebook account, you can't you know, run Facebook ads, right? So first and foremost, just as long as you have a Facebook account, you're up and running. Secondly, I need fancy cameras. So the great thing is just as long as you have an iPhone or you have an Android phone, that's good enough. And thirdly, I need a big budget. And this can be true, right? Obviously, once you got a high performance ad, you wanna be able to scale it. But when you're starting out, just as long as you have $5 a day, that's all you need. So another common wrong belief in running Facebook ads is it takes months to get results. This can be true. If you don't have a coach, a mentor showing you exactly what to do, I mean, obviously this can be true. But if you got someone teaching you and showing you how to create an effective Facebook ads, I mean, it can take you literally just a couple of days to get results. And lastly, the last common wrong belief in running Facebook ads is you need to be a data scientist to understand the analytics. Obviously, Facebook has a ton of data points, but you only need a few key data points to really know how your ads are performing. So there's a few reasons why old marketing strategies no longer work. First and foremost, it's not sustainable. So if you're planning to be in the solar industry for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, or maybe this is your career until you retire, unfortunately, if you use these old marketing strategies, you're just gonna literally burn yourself out. I mean, if you've been in the business for at least a year, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. You're literally gonna be in that hamster wheel, you're gonna spin your wheels all day long. So unfortunately, the old traditional business model is not sustainable. And secondly, not only is it not sustainable, it's not scalable. And this is probably the most important reason why solar consultants never really get ahead. So what I mean by not being scalable is, you can't be at a tabling event, knocking on doors, cold calling homeowners, waving street signs, and hanging door flyers all at the same time. It's physically impossible, right? As of 2017, I know we can't clone ourselves as of yet. So maybe 20, 30, 40 years from now, we may be able to clone ourselves and we can be at multiple places all at one time. Thirdly, you waste a lot of your time with very little to no return on your investment. So you probably sat at tabling events before for three, four, five hours out of your day. And think about how many leads you actually generated for spending that much time out of your day, right? You were probably able to generate maybe one to two janky ass leads, right? If you're lucky. So you waste a lot of time with very little to no return on your investment. Fourthly, these old strategies are just old, right? It's basically old as dirt and they're invented way before social media. I truly understand, you know, why we use these 
old marketing strategies before social media because there's just no way to be able to reach homeowners or reach people in general, right? Before social media. So there's social media now. You can literally generate leads while you sleep. So unfortunately, these old marketing strategies are done. They're dead uh, and they're literally old as dirt. So I've been in the energy industry for a while now, right? It's been over seven years and I've seen so many solar consultants come and go. Based on my experience, these are the things that's gonna happen if you continue to use these old marketing strategies. First and foremost, you're gonna pass up company incentives and bonuses. So if you go above and beyond your sales quota, and I barely did at the time when I used to sell before you know I tapped into Facebook ads, so you're probably hitting your sales quota right before the end of the month, right? And if you go above and beyond your sales quota, normally your company would reward you by giving you gifts or maybe giving you some money or some bonuses. And unfortunately, since you're barely hitting your sales quota, you're going to pass up company incentives and bonuses. Secondly, your boss is literally going to be on your ass because you're barely hitting your sales quota. He or she's going to be calling you like every minute of the day asking you, dude, what are you doing to generate leads? What are you doing to make more sales? And unfortunately, your boss is going to be on your ass if you continue to use these old marketing strategies. Thirdly, you're going to be in jeopardy of losing your job and your health insurance, right? Super important. If you have a family like I do, there's just no way I can even imagine losing my job right? And especially my health insurance. You know how kids are, right? If you have kids, they can be, you know, jumping up and down your bed, screaming and yelling around the house. Uh, and the next minute they're sick as a dog and you got to take them to the hospital, right? So unfortunately, if you continue to use these old marketing strategies, you're going to be in jeopardy of losing your job and your health insurance. And finally, if you continue to use these old marketing strategies, you're not going to make any type of real money to support yourself or maybe your family, right? So I know this by experience. I spun my wheels, you know, I was working 12, 14 hours every single day, seven days a week. And when I got that check, I was like, oh damn, right? It was barely enough to pay for rent at the time. So I know firsthand exactly the results of what you'll get by using these old marketing strategies. So now I wanna go over why Facebook is the best place to generate solar leads, right? The best place. First and foremost, it's cutting edge and it's wide open for anyone to capitalize. It's literally the digital gold rush. It's like back in the day, in the Western days, I think in the 1900s or maybe late 1800s when they had that gold rush in San Francisco. Everybody flocked over there and everybody panned for gold and they got rich, right? So if you know how to pan for leads in Facebook, you're definitely cutting into a cutting edge platform and it's literally wide open for anyone to capitalize in right now. Secondly, there are over 2 billion people on Facebook surfing every single day, right? Imagine if you had a tabling event and you had 2 billion people walking by your tabling event. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna come out with a crap ton of solar leads. Thirdly, you can target your ideal homeowner. So think about it for a second. Think about your most ideal homeowner. You probably had a solar consultation for over two hours, right? And probably the first you know, hour and a half or the first hour and 45 minutes, you're just talking about your hobbies, your dog, or your family. In the last maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, you design a system, they sign it, and off you went. Another great thing about running Facebook ads is you can target your ideal homeowner. And more importantly, you can actually scale your campaign by a couple clicks of a button, right? There's just no way you're going to be able to clone yourself to use these old traditional marketing strategies. Super, super important if you really want to get ahead. So maybe the last three bullet points didn't really hit a pain point for you. Hopefully this one does, right? Because there's just no way you can scale your old traditional marketing strategies, right? Not like Facebook. You can click a couple clicks of a button and now you're getting even more leads. Another reason why Facebook is the best place to generate solar leads is you can generate leads literally while you sleep. If I jump back in my DeLorean, right, and go back to the future about three and a half years ago, I still remember that first lead that I ever got while I was sleeping, right? I literally woke up, I think it was a Wednesday, it was 6.30 in the morning, and I checked my email and I seen a notification, 
When I clicked that notification, I had the homeowner's name, their email address, their phone number, and their address. And I was super stoked. I was like, this is so awesome, right? I was able to literally generate leads while I was sleeping. And lastly, it saves you time from doing these old marketing strategies so you can actually make more money. Sitting at a tabling event or knocking on doors for hours and hours every single day doesn't necessarily make you money. You wanna be able to capitalize on that time that you would've used knocking on doors or doing tabling events and use that time to actually sell more solar. All right, so far we talked about why these old marketing strategies no longer work, uh, what's gonna happen to you as well if you continue to use these old marketing strategies, and why Facebook is the best place to generate so early. So now I'm actually gonna dive into creating ads, but before I do, I just wanna build the foundation uh, on how to create the best ads as possible. So even if you have the best ad or even the ideal audience that you wanna target on Facebook, if you make these first mistakes, unfortunately, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. You're probably gonna get very little to no return on the investment that you're gonna make on running ads. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna build the foundation first on what you need to know before you even start running ads. And also once you're ready to start running ads, then I'm gonna show you exactly how to run a high efficient Facebook ad and also how to read the analytics in Facebook, right? Because it's super important because all of your ads should always be data driven, right? It shouldn't be like a flip of a coin, heads you're gonna change the photo and tails you're gonna change the ad copy, right? So you always should have a method to your madness. So some of the first mistakes that you can make on your Facebook page before you even start running ads is you establish yourself as a business, not a public profile. It's super important that you establish yourself as a public profile. You wanna brand yourself because positioning is everything, right? As far as running Facebook ad, right? You wanna be the expert, you wanna be a, a solar expert and branding and positioning is a big part when you're planning to run Facebook ads. And thirdly, some of the mistakes that you can make before you even run a Facebook ad is you brand yourself with a company that you work for, right? You never ever wanna do that, right? So for example, I would never brand myself as James the Sunrun expert, right? You wanna be able to brand yourself not the company that you work with because for whatever reason, if that company doesn't work out in the future, you just literally branded yourself with that company, right? So you can't take that brand that you already created if you branded yourself with a company. So as for me, for example, I branded myself as James the solar energy expert, right? I didn't brand myself with a company. Even if I decide to sell solar for any other companies, I branded myself, right? So I can literally work for anybody that I want and use that audience that I'm currently working hard to build. And I can basically take that audience anywhere that I go. And another mistake you can make on your Facebook page is you're not consistent at posting articles on your page. Especially if you're just starting out, you should be posting at least two to three times every single day on your page, right? So you wanna be super consistent when you're posting articles on your page. And lastly, the last mistake that you can make on your Facebook page before you even start running ads is you post articles that are not relevant to solar. Right, so make sure you don't post articles of you and your buddies or your girlfriends hanging out at the bar or whatnot. You wanna keep it pertinent to the solar industry, right? So you wanna post articles that are relevant in the industry. All right, so now we talked about what you need to do before you start running Facebook ads. So now we're gonna dive in deep and talk about how to run an effective Facebook ad. But before you run a Facebook ad, you have to have a Facebook pixel. Basically a Facebook pixel, it's a highly complex code that Facebook uses to gather information on who's landing on your page and who's signing up for leads, right? Super, super important because Facebook uses that information that it gathers to find your ideal audience, right? So the pixel basically does all the heavy lifting for you and it basically needs to go on everything on your uh, opt-in page header, on your thank you page header, on your website header, wherever you're driving traffic to, whether that's an opt-in page or whether it's a website, you have to have a Facebook pixel. Super important because like I said, Facebook does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but you have to steer their algorithm in the right direction. All right, so now I wanna talk about the do's and don'ts when making changes to your Facebook ads, right? So basically you've already created a Facebook page, you already got the Facebook pixel and you've basically plastered that all over your opt-in pages, your thank you pages and your website. Now these are the do's and don'ts when you're making changes to your Facebook ads. First and foremost, when you're making tweaks to your ad, 
make sure you only make minor tweaks at once, right? So if you decide to change the photo on your ad, don't change anything else. Wait at least 24 to 48 hours before you change anything else, right? Because Facebook's algorithm, it's like a delicate rose. And the more you tamper with the ad, the more rose petals falls off. So you wanna be super delicate when making any changes to your ads. So make one small tweak at a time. And secondly, once you get a high performing ad and now you wanna scale the budget, when you do decide to scale a budget, make sure that you're only scaling at least 10% of the original budget every single day, right? So what I mean by that is if you're running a $5 ad and say for example, you're getting five leads a day for $5, and you want to scale it, you know, $10 a day, and you would just assume that you would probably get like 10 leads a day, right? Because you just double the budget. Unfortunately, if you bumped up the ads to 100% all at one time, your ad is literally going to take a crap on you, right? So the right way to do it is if you have a $5 budget, make sure that you're only scaling it 10% every single day. So the first day you'll scale it at $5.50 and so on and so forth until you get to your ideal budget of $10, right? So don't just go from five to 10 all in one shot. You have to slowly, gradually increase your budget 10% every single day. Thirdly, your ads should always be data-driven. Don't just flip a coin, heads, you're gonna change the photo, uh, and tails, you're gonna change the ad copy. It should always be data-driven. And what I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later on today is how you can actually track your analytics, right? Because it's super, super important because if you don't have a gauge on how well your ads are doing, unfortunately, you may turn them off or you might even add more budget to a, a low-performing ad, right? So you wanna be able to analyze your ad to see whether or not if it's performing properly. If it is, you wanna scale it. And if it's not, you wanna make minor tweaks, right? It's just like uh, a pilot that wants to go from California to New York. They use navigational devices and they know how to read all those navigational devices. I hope so. Or else that pilot's not gonna be able to get you across country, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you probably eventually will, but it's not gonna get you there in a timely manner. You wanna be able to read your analytics. Obviously, Facebook has a lot of data points, but today I'm gonna show you four key data points that you need to really understand to determine whether your ads are running poorly or if it's running great. Fourthly, make sure you're consistent when you're posting on your page. I think we went over this uh, on the last slide. Uh, when posting articles, don't always ask for business jab jab punch this one's super important as well right i got this from gary vaynerchuk and if you guys aren't following gary vaynerchuk start following him he's actually a really good speaker entrepreneur and he actually wrote a book called jab jab hook right so what this means is when you're posting articles on your facebook page don't always ask for business right you want to give articles that's going to give your audience value whether it's an article about the environment or maybe the best kind of solar panels they should be you know, looking into, or maybe the best inverters, or whatever they may be. So you don't wanna always ask the homeowner, sign up for a solar coat, sign up for a solar coat. You wanna give more value than what you're asking, right? So make sure you, you're posting at least three or four value added articles, and maybe on the fifth or sixth article, that's when you ask for a solar quote. And lastly, post articles that are relevant to solar, right? You don't ever want to post irrelevant things. I think we went over this over the last slide as well, right? Don't just post videos or pictures of you and your buddies or your girlfriends hanging out the bar. All of your posts has to provide value in the solar industry, right? All right, so how to read your Facebook analytics. The analytics is a gauge to determine how good or how bad your ads are performing. So make sure you understand these data points and you literally know this like the back of your hand because I don't want you to run blindly and spend you know thousands and thousands of dollars with very little to no return on your investment uh, because you don't know your analytics. First and foremost, these two data points determines whether or not your ads are being served to the right audience. So basically the relevance score determines if your ad is being served to the right audience. Uh, the positive or negative feedback determines how relevant your ad is to that audience as well. So like I said, these two data points just determines whether or not your ads are being served to the right audience. So make sure you keep an eye on these two data points. The next data point is the click-through rate. So the click-through rate is the percentage of people that are seeing your ad versus the amount of people that are actually clicking on your ad. So now your ads are being served to the right people, and obviously you want those homeowners to actually click on your ad so they can opt in for a solar quote, right? So make sure that you keep an eye on your click-through rate as well. 
So the next data point is your opt-in rate. So basically your ads are being served to the right people. You have those people actually clicking on your ad. Now they land on your opt-in page, right? So basically the opt-in rate is the amount of people that are clicking on your ad that is actually opting in, right? So they're giving their information. These are the basic data points that you need to understand to start running ads, right? So if you don't really understand these data points, I suggest to not run any ads right now. You wanna make sure that you know these data points like the back of your hand. So the way to calculate the click-through rate is what you need to do is get the reach number and divide it by the click-through rate. That's gonna give you a click-through rate percentage. And to determine the opt-in rate percentage, you get the click-through number and you divide it by the number of leads that you're currently getting. That's gonna give you the opt-in rate percentage. So now I wanna go over the Facebook analytics and the conversion rates that you need to know along with these data points, right? So as far as the relevance score, you need to have a seven or better, right? And obviously for the positive or negative feedback, you wanna have a positive feedback. So as far as click-through rate, you need to have a 2% click-through rate or better, right? So if your click-through rate is less than 2%, you need to take a look at your Facebook ad, right? There's something there that the homeowner is not really driving and unfortunately they're not opting in, right? So it can be the photo, it can be the ad copy, it could be the headline. So this is basically where we're gonna be doing a lot of split testing and this is where we spend hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars to determine what is the highest converting ad that we can run that consists of a photo, that consists of a, a good um, ad copy, a headline, a catchy headline. So this is where you're gonna have to do split testing to try to get a 2% or better uh, click-through rate. And if you don't have a 2% or better click-through rate, make sure you take a look at the photo, the headline, the ad copy. So there's something going on there that the homeowner doesn't really like and they're not opting in, right? And like I said, this is where we spend hundreds and hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars to determine what is the best and highest converting Facebook ad. And as far as the opt-in rate, your opt-in rate has to be 20% or better, right? Meaning that 20% of, of your audience or 20% of the homeowners that's actually landing on your opt-in page has to opt in, right? So if you don't have a 20% or better uh, opt-in rate, make sure you take a look at your opt-in page, right? There's something going on with your opt-in page, uh, whether that's the headline, maybe you're asking too many things on the field from the homeowner, maybe you're asking too many things from the homeowner, uh, maybe like their credit score or what's your utility company. And also if you have the wrong color button, in this area as well, we spend hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars split testing the best opt-in page, right? So super important that you make sure that you're hitting um, these conversion rates, and if not, you basically know where to go, right? As far as a relevant score, if it's uh, under 7%, that means you're, you're serving your ad to the wrong audience, and positive and negative feedback goes hand in hand with a relevant score. Uh, the click-through rate, if you don't have a 2% or better click-through rate, you need to take a look at your Facebook ad, something is not jiving with a homeowner. Maybe they don't, they don't like the, the, the photo, maybe the ad copy or the headline uh, is not right and they're not opting in. So make sure you have at least a 2% or better. And as far as the opt-in rate, you need to have a 20% opt-in rate or better. If you don't, if you don't have a 20% opt-in rate or better, make sure you take a look at your opt-in page, right? It could be the headline, it could be the, the fields that you're, you maybe you're asking too many things on the actual field itself. It could be the color of the button. So it could be various things. So basically this is where you're gonna be running all your split testing to try to achieve uh, these conversion rates, right? All right, so let's create a Facebook ad, right? So now you guys have an understanding on why these old marketing strategies no longer work. We also talked about why Facebook is the best place to generate solar leads. Uh, we talked about Facebook pixels and where to put them, basically putting Facebook pixels everywhere. We talked about the do's and don'ts before you start running ads, and we just got done talking about conversion rates. So you're basically ready to rock and roll, right? So if you know these strategies, like the back of your hand, you're literally ready to run Facebook ads. So let's go ahead and log into our Facebook now, and I'll see you over there. All right, so you're looking at my personal Facebook page. So what we want to do first is create a Facebook page for you, right? So let's go ahead and click the drop-down arrow right here and click Create Page. 
All right, so now you should be here, and when you land here, this can be a little bit confusing, right, if you don't know which actual page to use or create, right? Because if you choose the wrong one, unfortunately, you're going to get very little to no um, leads, right, by using some of these pages. So so local businesses, we're not going to use that. Company organization, we're not going to use that as well. Brand or product, definitely not that. And pretty much, we're not going to use entertainment and cause or community. So what we want to use is this uh, page right here that says artist, band, or public figure. So go ahead and click that. So right here is where you're going to actually put your Facebook page name, right? For myself, I picked James the Solar Energy Expert. So it can totally be up to you. But the main takeaway here is make sure that you're branding yourself, right? Not the company that you're currently working with or you plan to work with, right? So I want to show you really quick my page so you guys have an idea. And if you guys haven't liked my page yet, make sure you guys jump over here and like my page so we stay connected. So basically, this is my page and I branded myself as James, the solar energy expert. So once you create your page, you're basically going to land here, but a blank version of this page, right? You're going to have to put in a cover photo and also a profile photo. And the place to get that, if you're creative and you want to make your own cover photo and profile photo, you can actually go to Canva, uh, cnva.com. This is the free software that you can use to overlay text over photos. So you can use this, which is pretty cool. Uh, or you can go to fiverr.com and you could hire a person here to create a, you know, a professional cover and a profile photo for you, right? Those are the two options you have. You either can use Canva or you can use Fiverr. All right, so now let's go back to Facebook and create an actual ad. So the way you do that is I want to go back to my Facebook page, go down here, go to ads manager. And before we actually create an ad, what we want to do is create a Facebook pixel. So click ads manager up here and click all tools and right under assets, it says pixels right here. So what you want to do now is go ahead and click pixels and create a pixel. Uh, Facebook is going to walk you step by step on creating a pixel, but basically uh, it's, it's fairly easy. And uh, what you want to do is once you create the pixel, you're done from there, right? That's all you need to do is just follow their steps uh, step by step on creating that pixel. And that's all you need to do from there, right? Once you have a pixel, you're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to create an ad. So after you create a pixel, what you want to do is go back to ads manager and go to the top right corner here and click create ads. So now you should be on this page here. Uh, this is where you're actually going to choose your objective. So I want to say we only use about two or three objectives here. We never use brand awareness, ant reach, no. Uh, traffic once in a while, engagements once in a while. We never use app. Facebook views, we use this once in a while. And the most obvious one here may be lead generation, which you want to stay away from the most. So the way lead generation works is basically you can run a Facebook ad, but instead of using your own opt-in page, you're actually going to use Facebook's opt-in page. And unfortunately, when we ran our trials uh, by using their page, it converted very, very low, right? So what we've done is we created our own opt-in page by using a different objective. So I suggest to stay away from lead generations. Like I said, we ran so many tests and trials and for some reason we just can't get this one to convert in our industry. So I highly suggest you stay away from lead generations. Store visits we never use, product catalogs we never use. What we use the most, I wanna say 90% of our ads, we actually use conversions. So basically we're telling Facebook that we were converting for a, a lead, right? So go ahead and click conversions. Go ahead and scroll down right here to campaign name. We could just put solar leads for now. You can name it whatever you like. So basically now we're in an ad set copy. This is where we're going to target our audience and also our detail targeting. So basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to steer Facebook's algorithm in the right direction. So basically once they find the right direction, they're going to take over from there. So what we want to do is, is give them the best chances of finding our ideal audience. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go down to conversions and X this out. If you already have lead there, then great. Don't X that out. So basically, we're going to choose this lead. So your circle here may be red. That just means that you haven't got any leads yet with this campaign, right? So don't even worry about it. So now I'm going to go down to the audience and I'm going to point out a few things here as far as the location. Um, as far as the location, you don't want to be too specific. Say, for example, you just don't want to put like one or two zip codes, right? Say if you work for Solar City or Sunrun, some of these big solar companies where they can service like 20, 30 plus different states, 
if you can't service those many states, I suggest to put as many states here as you can um, because it's going to help Facebook find your ideal homeowner. If you try to be really specific, if you try to do like one or two zip codes or one city or whatnot, you're still going to be able to get leads, but you're going to be paying a lot more to get those leads and, and more than likely, Facebook is going to take a little bit longer to find your ideal homeowner. So I suggest to put as many states or as many cities here as you can. Um, don't be too filtered when you're typing in the actual location of you know the homeowners that you want to target. So as far as age, I want to drop you guys a little nugget. Uh, we literally spent like hundreds of hours trying to determine the age demographics. So the age demographics that we target is 40 years old and older. And obviously there are 40 year olds and younger to have homes. But what we found based on our data, 40 years old and older are the ones that's actually moving forward with solar, right? So uh, to help you out a bit, like I said, I mean, you could take our suggestion or, you know, you could target, uh, you know, maybe a younger age or whatnot. But what we found uh, with our data, we like to choose 40 years old and older. So let's go ahead and scroll down to detail targeting. This is where you're going to have to do some homework on your end, right? Because the great thing is once you sit down and create your ideal uh, demographics, you could actually save this audience. So uh, once you create it one time, you could reuse the audience over and over again. So what I suggest is to probably email your current homeowners, ask them like, you know, where do you work? Uh, you know, where do you hang out with the kids? What's your favorite, you know, family attraction? Because that's when you're going to be able to hone in and, and find out exactly where your ideal homeowners are hanging out, right? So unfortunately, I can't fill this out for you because I don't know exactly where your ideal homeowners are hanging out. But this is where you're going to have to do some homework on your end. But I do want to point out a few things here under detailed targeting. If you click browse and click demographics, uh, first and foremost, if you click home and home ownership, go ahead and click homeowners, right? Because we are targeting homeowners, not renters. We want to make sure our ads are being served to the right audience, right? So let's go ahead and click browse again, demographics and financials and income. So unfortunately, you can't target credit scores and things like that on Facebook. But, but what we found is homeowners that make $50,000 or more a year, more than likely they're gonna have a credit score of 640 or better. Obviously, it's not accurate. Um, you know, you could have homeowners that's making, you know, $500,000 a year with a credit score of 500 or vice versa, right? You could have homeowners that's making, you know, $50,000 uh, or less a year with a 750 credit score, right? But what we found, if you target homeowners that's making at least $50,000 or more a year, you may have a better chance of, of getting a credit score of 640 or higher. And like I said, that's not super accurate, but if it's critical for you to determine credit score, that's probably something that you want to try out, right? All right, so what we want to do next is click exclude people and then click browse, demographics, home, home ownership. And what we want to do here is click renters, right? Because this right here, when you tell Facebook, yeah, I want to only target homeowners, it's, it's, it's not foolproof. But basically, when you put it down here, it's really going to help your ad so it doesn't get served to renters, right? So make sure that you also exclude renters down here. Um, let's go ahead and scroll down here for placements for right now. Let's just keep it at automatic placements. Obviously when you want to scale and reach more homeowners, there are strategies that you can actually use edit placements. Uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead and keep this, uh, to automatic. So for the budget, let's go ahead and make that a $5. If that's what you're planning to run as far as your daily budget, uh, optimization for ad delivery. Let's just keep that conversion. As far as the conversion window, let's just keep that to seven day clicks. Let's just go ahead and click continue. Now we're going to actually update the ad. All right. So now you should be here and this is where we're going to actually create the ad copy. So let's go ahead and click single image and let's scroll down right here and I'll show you something super cool. If you click free stock images and you type in solar, check this out. Boom. Right? So you have all these professional images that you can actually choose from, which is super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and choose this one here and check this out. Boom, right? It's right here. That's super cool. You're like almost halfway done, right? So what you want to do here, this is where you're going to put your opt-in page URL. Um, hopefully you already created one in ClickFunnels. 
If not, make sure you create an opt-in page through ClickFunnels. Um, once you create an opt-in page, you're going to put the link right here. And basically, an opt-in page is just uh, the page that we're going to use to capture your leads information, right? That's where they're going to submit their information. They're going to click submit and you're going to get it in your ClickFunnels back office, right? So if you haven't created one, make sure you create one using ClickFunnels. Super important. After you put the opt-in page URL link there, uh, now you want to actually change the ad copy. The headline right here just goes right underneath the photo. And now I want to share another nugget with you that uh, we ran you know, literally hundreds of hours and spent a lot of money testing the actual headline. So the headline that we use on our, our highest converting um, Facebook page is, drum roll please, amazing solar options, exclamation point, right? As simple as that looks, we literally spent hundreds of hours and probably thousands of dollars split testing the best headline, right? So that's another nugget for you guys. Make sure you guys use amazing headlines. Uh, as far as text, the text is gonna go right up here. Um, this is where you're gonna basically give the homeowner a little snippet or, on what they're gonna get if they opt in, right? So you put something in the lines of get a free solar quote in 30 seconds, uh, you know, limited time offer, um, get a free Nest thermostat, whatever that may be, right? If you guys have a, a free gift or whatnot, you can give the homeowner. So basically, this is going to be a little snippet of what the homeowner is going to get if they decide to opt into your opt-in page, right? It's super important uh, that you create something catchy. This is where you're going to run, you know, all your split testing to determine what's the best photo to use, what's the best text. I already gave you guys the headline and the last part of the puzzle here is right under here under newsfeed link description. This is basically the call to action, right? You can put something in the lines of limited time, limited time offer, something catchy. So if I was to run a brand new ad, I'm gonna show you how to prioritize which, uh, which part of the ad should you change first, right? When you're doing your split testing or whatnot. So the first thing you need to split test is the photo. Right, so make sure that you get a baseline on the photo that you're currently using, right? And the following day or maybe 48 hours after you started running your ad, once you have that data, you could go ahead and change the photo, right? So run that ad again with a new photo for another 24 to 48 hours and determine whether or not your ad got better or if it got worse, right? So if it got better, great. Go ahead and keep the ad and move on to changing the text, right? The text is right here which is gonna go right above the photo, uh, if your ad got better once you change your photo. And if your ad got worse after you updated the photo, make sure you go back to the old photo. Or what you can do is, is add a different photo and watch and see for the next 24 to 48 hours to determine whether or not that second photo made any changes to your analytics, right? So if it got better, great, right? Move on to the text. If it got worse, you may want to go back to your original photo or you can try another photo from there, right? So it's totally up to you how you want to uh, split test uh, this ad. So normally what I would do first is I would find the best photo. And once I've determined the best photo, I would go ahead and work on the text. And once I've determined the best text, I would move down to the headline, which I already gave you guys. And lastly, you want to update the newsfeed link description last, right? Because this one doesn't matter as much as the photo, right? So I would uh, prioritize it that way, right? First is the photo, second is the text, third is the headline, and last is the newsfeed link description. So once you're done with that, the last thing that you need to do is click confirm right? And you're up and running from there. But before you click confirm, make sure that you've already done the things that we talked about earlier, right? As far as the do's and don'ts when running Facebook ads. And more importantly, you need to know your analytics like the back of your hand. You don't want to run ads blindly because you're going to spend hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of dollars with very little to no return on your investment if you don't know how good or how bad your ads are running. I can't stress this enough and it's super important to know the data points that we talked about today because those data points are just the bare minimum that you need to understand 
when running Facebook ads. And obviously, once you become more advanced, you're going to be tracking different data points within Facebook. But the four uh, data points that we talked about today, it's a must, right? When you're just starting out and you're planning to run Facebook ads, it's a must. So I just want to set up a proper mindset, right? Before you guys click confirm, right? Because obviously our budget is going to be a lot higher than yours. We've positioned ourselves for a couple of years now in Facebook and obviously our results are going to be different than yours. So I just want to make sure that we're transparent and you know what you're getting into once you start running Facebook ads, because I hear it all the time. I get calls from consultants. They're like, Hey James, you know what? I've been running a $5 ad for the last seven days. and I only got two leads. And to me, they're complaining, but for me, I'm like, holy crap, that's actually awesome, right? Because if you can get two leads, you know, for like 35 bucks, that's pretty darn amazing. So just to set, you know, the proper expectations for you, I mean, obviously, like I said, we've been doing this for a long time. We know exactly what we're doing. We split tested like hundreds of ads, you know, spent thousands and thousands of dollars to determine, you know, what's the highest converting Facebook ads for us. So obviously, since you're just starting out, these are things that you need to go through, right? You need to run all these split tests. And if you're getting one lead with a $5 budget, that's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, just to let you know, that's still a really, really good start. Uh, and also, I want to ask you, like, how long are you planning to stay in this industry? I mean, if you plan to stay in this industry for a very long time, then, you know, you need to really work on your Facebook page, right? It just takes time. Uh, it's just like if you wanted to plant an orange tree. I mean, obviously, if you put a, a orange seed in, in the, you know, in the soil today, you know, you don't expect a full blown orange tree tomorrow, right? So you need to definitely, you know, plant that seed, uh, nurture the seed. Eventually, you're going to see the fruits of your, you know, your your work, right? Don't expect to, for that tree to grow overnight. So tomorrow's strategy is going to basically bring this all together, right? Like I said uh, at the beginning of the training, you need to have all these strategies to make real money, have time and location freedom, right? You can't have one without the other. So make sure you keep an eye out for that email tomorrow. Thank you for joining me in this training today. Goodbye for now.